what is going on everybody it is your boy nothing but skills and today i'm bringing you one of those builds that everybody hates in the dz but at the end of the day guys remember this is just a game and you should be able to play every build play any build you want whether you want to play predator's mark whether you want to run nomad d3 striker whatever build you want to run don't be afraid to run it it's just a video game we don't have a pro league we don't have a pro league in the division so you shouldn't really worry about what other people care about what build you run so this build is for a lot of you guys who want to know how to build this build and hopefully you guys enjoy it so let's get into it so the build we're going to be talking about is predator's mark if you didn't notice at the beginning of the video yes there was bleeds and even one bleed that hit up to 345,000. you guys are like 345,000. that's crazy what build are you running so let's check it out my primary firepower is 521,000. that's firearms of 4,000. my toughness is 599,000. that's almost 600,000. and the stamina of 9,060. and my my skill power is 88,000 and that's electronics of 2,900. Now how do I have this build set up? So let's break it down. So for the chest piece, it's road stamina. The major attributes are 9% skill haste, 16,000 health and ammo capacity. Now I put skill haste on the chest piece because I'm a predator's mark. So I'm not really worried about another predator's mark. If a predator mark is going to kill me, he's going to kill me either way because this build is not a build to last. So I put skill haste on there because maybe that skill haste will help me get my skills back just a little bit quicker. For the mods, I'm running stamina mods with 1% critical hit chance. Now, if you guys want to know why you want to run 9,000 stamina, the six piece bonus is going to tell you everything. Hitting 10 shots without switching targets now applies the Predator's Mark, which makes the target bleed for 50% of the damage already done by those bullets. The damage over time to that target is increased by 15% for every 3,000 stamina. So as you get the max bonus out of it, you want to be at 9,000 stamina. And then when you're at 9,000 stamina, the damage over time bonus is increased by 120%. So that's why this build just hits so much harder when you're at 9,000 stamina. I'm not gonna break down the rest of the build, but you guys get the point right there. For the mask, it's road stamina. The major attribute is 4% critical hit chance. I'm gonna stack critical hit chance throughout this build because I wanna be able to hit those critical hit damage shots more often in those 10 bullets so that way my bleed is a lot higher. My minor attribute is 12% damage to elites. Now this isn't the perfect mask. If I had a better mask, probably get some burn resistance on here. For the mods, I'm running stamina mods with 1% critical hit chance. For the knee pads, it's rolled stamina. The major attribute is critical hit damage. So I'm stacking critical hit chance, critical hit damage with this build at 9k stam. My minor attributes are shock resistance, burn resistance, and damage to elites. Another one where I would remove the damage to elites. I didn't get the perfect roll predator mark knee pads, so I'm kind of stuck with this. So I have burn resistance, shock resistance, and then damage to elites. Now, if you want perfect knee pads, you don't want to have damage to elites on a PvP build. The mods I'm running are stamina mods with 1% critical hit chance, and then those performance mods with 6% first aid self heal. For the holster, the major attribute is 4% critical hit chance. So critical hit chance on the mask and the holster, and then the mods are all going to have critical hit chance. That's a lot of critical hit chance. You keep stacking little by little, and before you know it, you're still going to have a lot of critical hit chance, even with an assault rifle. The mods I'm running are performance mod with 6% first aid self heal. Now for the gloves, they're old firearms. They have assault rifle damage, critical hit chance, and critical damage. The reason why I have assault rifle is because I'm running this with a urban MDR for those high bleeds. Now, if you want to run a house, you can really run a house, and that's probably going to be better when you have a lot of close quarter combats. But what I like doing is I like having assault rifle damage on here. I fight players from distance, put that high bleed, and then once I get that bleed, hopefully, even if they come towards me, they'll have to use a med kit. I can always switch to my house and then hit them with that damage. For the backpack, it's rolled stamina. It has critical hit damage and ammo capacity. I have ammo capacity on the backpack and I have ammo capacity on the chest piece. For the mods, I'm running stamina mods with 1% critical hit chance. So that's a total of an additional 5% critical hit chance since I have five stamina mods with 1% critical hit chance on this build. And then I have those performance mods with 6% first aid self heal. One other thing you can do is if you don't really care about any kind of survivability, you could take off the first aid self heal mods. You could put post crit chance mods on there or pulse crit damage mods on there. And that way, every time you pop your pulse, you'll hit those players a lot harder. So for the weapon, the weapon that really makes this build is the Urban MDR. The reason why is because you can still shoot it pretty quick. It has 24% enemy armor damage. The base damage on here is 51,000. The talents I have work great with 9K stand builds. So I have deadly critical hit damage increased by 15%. So every time I hit those critical hit damage shots, they're gonna be a lot higher. And then that's why the bleed's gonna be so high. And then since I'm stacking critical hit chance on this build, I have a higher chance of doing that. I also stack vicious on here critical hit chance is increased by 10 percent when having more than two segments of health so vicious works really good with ars especially if you're going to use them at distance that's why i said with this build i use the urban mdr at distance when i get close to a player that's when i switch to the house so having vicious on here more likely than not i'm going to have the extra 10 percent critical hit chance stacked on this build and then of course if you guys don't know the main talent on the urban mdr is distracted your damage is increased by 18 percent against targets with status effects so every time you do get that bleed on them if they're from distance you're going to hit that much harder now the way i have this modded is I have a C79 scope with critical hit damage, 
critical hit chance and headshot damage. I have an SR7 suppressor with critical hit damage, critical hit chance, headshot damage, a small grip with 19% critical hit damage, optimal range and reload speed. And then I have an extended magazine with magazine size, critical chance and rate of fire. Now for my secondary, a lot of you guys might have this gun. You might have the house and you might use it as your primary with these talents. It has 23% critical hit chance, it has 17.9k base damage, and then the talents I have on here are deadly. Critical damage is increased by 15%. Another really good DPS talent you can have unlocked with a 9k stand build is Unforgiving. Missing health segments increase your damage. One missing segment is plus 10% damage. Two missing segments is an additional 25% damage. That's why using the Urban MDR from distance, you have Vicious active. If they get you under those two segments, most likely they're closer. Then you switch to this weapon you have unforgiving unlock so you gain some of that damage back you have deadly on here and then you have card counter where one half of the magazine does 20 percent increased damage the half which deals increased damage flips after 15 seconds or when the magazine is empty the way i have this modded is i have critical hit damage headshot damage and critical hit chance allow vent break with critical hit damage headshot damage critical hit chance a small grip with critical hit damage, reload speed, optimal range, and then that extended magazine with magazine size, critical chance, and rate of fire. For my sidearm, it really doesn't matter what you're running. I like sustain, predatory, and determined for almost every single build I run. It's just really good talents to have. If you see any NPCs around, you can hit those NPCs. You can get your skills back faster. You can get predatory active where you get 35% of your health over 20 seconds. And then sustain gives you that health of 6% every time you get that kill. So if we get into my skills, the skills that I like running with this build, since this build is to put out a lot of damage, I do run a scrambler, so I do like this so players can't see me coming close to them or they can't chase me down. So if I need to get away, I can pop this and get away and then regroup. Now this does give me an additional 7% critical hit chance an additional 7% critical hit damage. That's why I say if you don't want to run that 6% first aid self heal, you can either put pulse crit damage or pulse crit chance mods on there and that'll give you an additional 8% on top of this. Now, I pair that up with a booster shot because I want to hit as hard as I can off the bat and I'm not really worried about survivability with this build. So the booster shot is only going to heal me for 48,000 but I'm using it for that temporary increased damage and damage resistance when I do pop my booster shot. This comes back every 46 seconds. My pulse is going to come back every 46 seconds. Now, since I am solo, I'm I'm running recovery link and really that's just there because I want to put out as much damage as I can let the recovery link pop off and hopefully I can drop them before they drop me for the talents I do still run adrenaline because if they are running predators mark that's the only thing that's really going to save me I always run shrapnel with predators mark because applying a bleed to any target triggers a 30% chance per each targets in a 10 meters radius to catch them on bleed so if there's three players you catch one on bleed they have a 30% chance to catch on bleed too of course I'm going to have precision headshot a hostile to pulse them for 10 seconds because that increases your critical hit chance and your critical hit damage for a short time and then on on the move if i do kill one of them kill a hostile while moving to reduce incoming damage by 15 percent for 10 seconds so this is pretty much my build this build is really to go out there and melt those rogues or even if you get into a server where you find a lot of players coming at you one-on-one -on -one, you most likely will go manhunt with this build so if we look at my urban mdr my critical hit chances has 37% and that's without the pulse. My critical damage is at 128% and my headshot damage is at 107%. So that's why the bleeds with the Urban MDR are insane. And that's why you saw me get one for over 300,000. That's pretty crazy. And even on the other bleed, it was over 200,000. And bleeds for over 200,000, 300,000, that can make Nomads proc. That can make people instantly drop having the Urban MDR with this bleed. If you can get those 10 shots on, build just melts. And if we look at my house, if you guys want to see what I have on here, my crit chance is at 50 percent that's without precision that's without popping a pulse my critical hit damage is at 130 percent so even running this build without smg on the gloves if i decided to switch smg on these gloves it would hit that much harder if i'm in a group that's what i would probably do i'll probably run smg on the gloves instead of running the urban mdr unless i know i'm going to have a chance to switch back and forth so it really just depends on what you want to do i like using assault rifle damage on the gloves because i want those high bleeds with the urban mdr and the headshot damage is 62 percent so yeah that's my build guys this is how i run predators mark if i run predators mark i haven't run predators mark in a long time i think today when i made this video was the first time that i ran predators mark i got on I went into the DZ, I went rogue first, then I ended up running off the rogue timer because nobody came after me. I found some rogues that you guys saw, I killed them, and then that was pretty much it. I really just got on to see how hard this build still hits because it's been such a long time. But this build still melts. If you guys still want to use it, a lot of people said that Predator's Mark isn't around anymore. It still does damage, guys. And remember, whatever build you guys choose to use, use that build, have fun with it. It's just a video game, guys. If you guys can't deal with it, you might need to try a different game. And that's the truth, guys. There's ways to fight Predator's Mark. There's ways to fight Nomad. There's ways to fight D3. There's ways to fight Striker. Well, Striker got nerfed. <laughs> But there's ways to fight all those builds and be good at it. And especially if you're in a team environment, you guys should be able to overcome anything. And if you die, everybody dies, right? Everybody dies in the DZ. 
I don't think there's one person who's never died in this game. So don't take it to heart. It's just a video game. Have fun. Enjoy the game. If you stop having fun playing games, it might be time to find a new game. Thank you guys again for all the support. If you're new to my channel, first time watching the video, hit the subscribe button. If you guys enjoy this video, hit the thumbs up. And if you have any questions, use the comment section down below. As always, if you don't see me in the last stand, if you don't see me in skirmish, if you don't see me in the dark zone, it's only a matter of time. Nothing but skills is out.